check this out. I'm taking this out to the farm. I'm going to pull all of this out and I'm going to replace it with that. Let's do this. For those who don't know or haven't seen my most popular video, my battery. My pride and joy, it's been sitting in the corner of my shed for two or three years now, doing practically nothing. A quick rundown on this battery, and it's made up entirely of recycled 18650 cells recovered from used laptops. Uh, and in this side we've got a Batrium BMS, we've got a couple of relays here so we can control things such as the Haltech and the shunt trip down there, and also we've got a couple of fans down the bottom there. So the cooling is all controlled by the battery management system. We've got a small converter there, so 48 volts to 12 volts, so that runs the BMS and it runs the fans. And then we've got a shunt trip here that's also connected up to the battery management system, and that allows it to turn off with one of the temperature sensors in here, all high and low voltage situations. So let's get this on the back of a ute. better than expected. Let's strap it down and go for a drive. That's not going nowhere. starting to pull this apart and decommission it. It's evolved a little bit over time, but the, the old inverter's running well. We did lose a um, an MPPT charge controller in that. I think it's just because of the really high moisture content here at some times of the year. And the sheds are all steel construction, including the floors, a bit of plate steel. So it, the, the moisture doesn't really work in this environment and all the pure nickel strip completely rusted. got most of it all stripped out there's really not much to it it's positive and negative it's only for bolts and cables and stuff you just take it all out it's not like the two days that I spent procrastinating putting it all in making it all look neat it's evolved a little bit since then for the job it's done it saved a heck of a lot of gas in that generator let's get these batteries out it's not ideal Dirt divers. <laughs> a lot more than what we realized. Look at that. That is probably borderline dangerous. And an extremely good argument for moving towards something that's sealed. 
uh, four years, five years, who cares? But that's, that could end badly actually. That's not expected. So whoever designed those mounts did a cracking good job. And they were never gonna fall off the wall ever. All right, let's grab the rest of this out. Well, the Sparky's just left. Uh, he's left us a laundry list of stuff to get. We're not quite finished with this install, but between, what, three and four hours? Had it all switched over, painted the wall, made it all look a little bit better. Uh, the cover is still not on. Uh, we are waiting on a few more things from the electrician. He didn't have clamps and he didn't have a, we called him on no notice. Tim, it's welcome to day three. We've got a little bit of an echo because the door's shut because the sun is right there. The plan was, we're gonna leave it all like this. It all works. We got the, the GPO there, the, the breaker. We got cables everywhere. And frankly, it looks like shit. So we can't end the video like this. We're gonna fix what we just fixed. Much nicer. Shorter cables here. Ditch the 48 to 12 volt converter. We've got a different pump for that. Those cables now go behind the wall, nice and tidy in through there. Uh, he's got to get something else and put it in the area set, but here we back shortly to do this. I can't wait to get that out and actually get a proper circuit breaker in here for us. Well, tubers, it's done and I haven't seen the result yet. So come with me for a first look. Yes! That's what I wanted. Genuinely excited. And I'm sorry about the echo again, that big thermonuclear reactor is messing with things a little bit, but it's done. I haven't, this was done when I wasn't here. Um, get in. Come on, have a quick look. So all the cables and mess has gone. Now, I did the other day, I routed the solar. So the DC, I routed it behind the wall and then come up here nice and tidily. And we shortened up these cables here so it looks nice and neat and tidy. But 240 volt, don't touch that. So let's have a look what's in there. Oh, we've got a bit of sun too. There we go, that's a little bit better. So in here we've got, oh, he's got an energy meter. So he's got 5.2 kilowatt hours so far on it. So he must have only put this in in the last 24 hours or so. Uh, it's got a GPO. Um, and it's got 316, what are they? 16 amp fuses. I did ask for five, and I did ask for um, individual uh, safety switches on each one so I'm not sure what's going on there I'll give him a quick call I may not have gotten five because there's enough room there for two more maybe that does them all I'm not sure but that looks like it's a 20 amp safety switch 
and I think it should have been a 30 amp if it's doing the entire board. But let's take a look at what else we've got. We've got the inverter, so Orient power inverter. Okay, this shed is proper hot, uh, hence the fans ramping up and down. Have a quick look here, we've got AC coming in. Obviously we've got no volts, but I do see he's put the surge protector in already. So the electrician put the surge protector in there for me. Um, he does have cables hanging out the bottom there. I dare say that's coming down there, back up there and into there because he hasn't got that one populated, which is kind of pretty neat. Did a pretty good job there, I guess. Mustn't have had a gland that fit that properly. But that's fine, I'm happy with that. Looks good, looks nice and neat and tidy. So an AC input, we've got nothing until we maybe do another video and put a generator on it. We've got input and output there. Uh, so the battery is 56 volts and the output is 229-ish volts. Now we've got the solar. Sorry about you going for a roller coaster ride. Got the solar coming in of 195 volts on one and 190 on the on the second string of that. That's the inverter. So that can go up to 6,300 watts of solar panels at the moment. We've only got half of that on there. So we have got plenty of headroom to add some more solar panels to that. It's a 5.5 kilowatt hour uh, inverter. And there's three 16 amp switches, so if he's got three circuits there and some heavy cable up to there, I dare say we're golden with that. Uh, that is not patched into the house yet. There is still some more cabling that have got to go back and rewiring of the main house. Uh, at the moment, we've got this power cable here, like I said before, so that power cable comes up to there, and then the battery comes from here. Now, this battery is a 25 kilowatt hour battery, but we've only got it configured to use uh, 3.2 volts as the low and 4 volts as the high. So it puts it about 16, maybe 18 kilowatt hours of usable energy storage, but it will give them quite a long life. And then I got here today and I just turned on that um, active balancer, even though the active balancer is completely not needed. Plug that in. The white balance is absolutely terrible on the old GoPro. If you plugged in there, extension cord, and flip that on, and she's charging. Terrible lighting, Pete. What are you doing? There you go, green charging light. So, we can charge off grid. I really need to charge the car because I got out here with about 75 kilometers of range and it's 100 k's home. So that won't work. And if anybody's interested, this is a 2012 MG electric car, full electric. It's the cheapest one I could afford. Back in here again, we'll have a quick look at the Batrium software again. And again, this is Batrium Watchmon 5 with the Watchmon Toolkit installed on the laptop to monitor it. I don't actually need this on, I can log in at home via MQTT, I believe. Uh, but what have we got now? We've got, uh, so the voltage has dropped a little bit, 3.91, just because it's under load. 55, uh, 28 amps coming out. That car draws 1750 watts. And it is late in the afternoon, as you can see, the sun's sort of there uh, and the solar panels are up there. So we're not getting very much sun late in the afternoon. We'll have a quick look at the other software. Funnily enough, that hasn't got too much noisier. Uh, what have we got? So you can see grid voltage is zero volts. Again, uh, we've got solar input 156 volts and 143 volts. Uh, we've got a load of 2000 watts, we've got battery voltage 55, load percent 36% on the actual inverter itself, so that's not bad. Just ticking away, 36% charging the car, that's nothing. Uh, PV1, PV2 today, 0.4 this year. I think this power information only pops up and only logs when this USB cable is plugged in all the time. So we've got daily, monthly, yeah, so that's only today. So it actually doesn't pull fresh information from the inverter. It only saves the inverter information on this software, which I guess is understandable considering the price point of um, $1,750 Australian. Now I'll wrap this one up. I don't think there's much more information I can give to you about this particular setup at this time. 
Still want to finish up a few more things and I want to hold a few cards close to my chest. Uh, that's so, those circuit breakers, there's going to be more there I hope. Uh, and this inverter is going to be really improving the lifestyle and what I can do myself and my mate that owns the property, what we can do out here. I can come out here all day, I can charge my car. It's too hot in here. I hope I've got all the information you need and I hope you can see both my pride and I don't even know what the word is. To have this battery installed after so long not being really used at all and being my most popular video, um, there's a lot of firsts uh, with this battery and now to team it up with the Orient Power 5.5 uh, kilowatt inverter, it's a match made in heaven. And on that note guys, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you on the next one. Just gonna play with these boys, see if they kill themselves on the motorbike. <laughs>